Hey, what it is, what it do, man. Uh, before we get started, I'd like for y'all to uh follow me, you know, uh follow me on IG, follow me on TikTok. If y'all ain't already did that on, on here right now, you know, uh follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my my uh YouTube channel at Shot of Zo Pound 591. You know, uh like, uh post, repost, uh uh share. Leave all comments to all content, man. It helped with the algorithm of the case of uh, uh, the app. You know, uh, we got some more stuff out there, man, talking about Haitians. We got this this uh, congressman right now, you know, saying said some slick stuff about Haitians. Then he turned around and he uh, he go to the back and he withdraw it. And then he say he going to pray for it, man. No matter whether you withdraw it or what, you know, your intent is still your intent. I don't care what you do. Once you say something, once you have a certain look, that's your intent. So. Regardless of, of what you're talking about, you can't you can't take that back. You can't. Oh, let me erase that. So, uh, a lot of my Zos and Zoets, man, y'all might be mad out there. You know, what I'm saying mad that they don't respect y'all. But let me be honest with y'all. I want y'all to think real hard, right? What do we as a coach, we as a group, we as a unit? What do we give other coaches as a group and as a unit? What do we give them to respect? Right? We don't give them nothing to respect. We even got our own people, man. Uh, black U.S. Americans, right? That don't uh, respect us. You know? Our own people don't respect us. They going right along with that stuff that was going on in Springfield. They eating the dogs, eating the cats. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Y'all been eating raccoons and possums, man, y'all whole life. And, uh, you want to point the finger at us. And then we have some people be like, oh, no, you know, uh, not all of us get down like that. I'm not talking about all of you. That just like all Haitians don't get down like that. If a if a Haitian eat a dog, cat, and all that stuff like that, man, that's on them. That's them. But you can't put all Haitians in that category. That's that man. He did that. You know? That's that man did that. You know? So, but, uh, yeah, I want to uh, run this film to y'all right quick, man. See how y'all see how y'all take this. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about it when I get through. Y'all check this out. Play Higgins, this guy. Now, he doesn't have much of a record of accomplishment in the house, but today he certainly got noticed. This is what he posted on social media. Quoting the congressman now, LOL, these Haitians are wild, eating pets, voodoo, nastiest country in the Western Hemisphere, cults, slapstick gangsters, but damned if they, they don't feel all sophisticated now filing charges against our president and VP. All these thugs better get their mind right and their ass out of our country before January 20th. So a couple things to unpack here. Voodoo, by the way, is a streaming service that's owned by Fandango. He obviously meant the religion voodoo, but just knows nothing about it. More importantly, he is slurring an entire country and everyone from that country, men, women, and children, people who are in this country legally and Americans of Haitian descent. He seems particularly riled up that a Haitian American organization would take, have the temerity to have taken legal action. Damned if they don't feel all sophisticated now, he, he uh, tweeted. Well, late today, he took down that tweet, and House Speaker Johnson said that Higgins regrets the post. He was approached on the floor by colleagues who said that was offensive. He went to the back. I just talked to him about it. He said he went to the back and he prayed about it and he regretted it and he pulled the post down. That's what you want a gentleman to do. I'm sure he probably regrets some of the language he used, but, um, you know, we move forward. We believe in redemption around here. Yeah, he went to the back and he prayed real hard about it and he regrets it. Nevertheless, House Democrats brought a motion to censure the congressman, which drew this objection from Majority Leader Steve Scalise. For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana seek recognition? First of all, the tweet has been deleted already and removed, but I object, For to, what purpose I object the to the motion. And if we want to go suspend. through every comment will tweet suspend. from the other side, we'll be happy to do it. Gentleman has not been recognized. Be the censure motion has been pushed back until after the election. Now, Clay Higgins' language might surprise you, but it's not difficult to figure out the source of his inspiration about Haitians eating their pets. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Of course, no evidence that has been debunked. But again, 
These are not original ideas Congressman Higgins is coming up with. Like when he said they better get their asses out of the country, we all know where that came from, too. Do you think Springfield will ever be the same? I don't think. The fact is, and I'll say it now, you have to get them the hell out. You have to get them out. I'm sorry. To get them out. Can't have it. Can't have it. They've destroyed it. Now, before Congressman Higgins was in Congress, he was in local law enforcement in Louisiana. That's right. He had the power to arrest people. And if you read up on him, you'll see he has something of a track record on outrageous statements and other things. As the co-founder of Harvard University's Neiman Media Lab discovered, the congressman is cited in a newspaper article in the Bayou Brief back in 1992 when he was voting for former KKK Grand Wizard David Duke to be the governor of Louisiana. Now, back then, there were a lot of people who said they just didn't believe that Duke was the racist he was being made out to be in the you know, liberal media and they were going to vote for him. But apparently not Clay Higgins. He knew full well and voted for him anyway. He told a reporter, quote, regardless of the fact that David's a homeboy and all that, the boy's a Nazi, and that's a real problem. And then the reporter noted that Mr. Higgins voted for Mr. Duke anyway in the governor's race. Joining us now is Congressman Stephen Horsford, Democrat of Nevada and chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congressman, thanks for, for being with us. Um, when you read this post from the congressman, what was your initial reaction? Anderson, thank you for having me on. Uh, when I read it, I thought of the Haitian immigrants, Haitian Im uh, Americans all throughout this country, those in Springfield and in my district in Nevada and all across the country who are living today in fear, uh, who feel harassed, who feel singled out and targeted by the former president, Donald Trump, by Senator J.D. Vance, uh, by Representative Higgins. And it's this type of racist intolerance, this divisive rhetoric that must stop. Uh, it's why I have filed a resolution to censure Representative Higgins. It's time to turn the page, as the Vice President Kamala Harris has said, against this divisiveness that pits one group of Americans against another. Congressman Higgins has told CNN that he stood by his comments, adding, quote, it's all true. I can put up another controversial post tomorrow if you want me to. I mean, we do have freedom of speech. I'll say what I want. He also said, quote, it's not a big deal to me. It's like something stuck to the bottom of my boot. Just scrape it off and move on with my life. Um, you know, Speaker Johnson claims he prayed about it and regretted it and, and took it down. Maybe he had another talk with Jesus and decided he's standing by it. Um, do the, the, the censure motion, is that, that's now off the table until after the election. I mean, is that kind of finished? No, it's not. And it's not about the next election. Uh, it's about the fact that this type of uh, divisive, racially charged, uh, hateful rhetoric needs to stop right now. There are children who are Haitian immigrants, who are Haitian Americans, who do not feel safe going to school because they are targeted right now. My colleagues, uh, Representative Sheila Sherfilis McCormick and Frederica Wilson and Ayanna Presley and Maxwell Frost, who are members of the Haitian caucus, joined with the Congressional Black Caucus and other members uh, just earlier this week to push back on J.D. Vance and these made up stories that it's not even true what they're saying. Um, and it's time for this to end. But guess what? Uh, it, it, it's this type of divisiveness that is actually tearing our country apart. I understand that according to sources who witnessed the interaction, you and Congressman Higgins had a heated exchange on the House floor. Can you say what, what did he tell you when you talked to him? Well, I was supporting my colleagues who were trying to compel him uh, to understand how his words are affecting the lives of actual people today people who contribute to our communities, who are entrepreneurs, who are nurses and doctors, uh, people who don't deserve to be targeted. Let's just start with that. They didn't do anything wrong. And I asked him specifically uh, to remove his post. And he's like, I'm gonna pray about it. What do you need to pray about? Just do what is right and stop this hateful rhetoric uh, that is causing people to feel targeted. Um, he told me no. And that is when I said, if you refuse, I will take this to the floor. We will move 
for a resolution to censure you. And that is exactly what we did. And sadly, the Republican leadership were more focused about silencing me than holding him accountable. And he used his official platform, the property of the House of Representatives. He probably thought he was posting on Truth Social, but in fact, he told everyone exactly what it is he believes. Uh, we are going to follow through on this. It is not about the next election. It is about every day people in America feeling targeted. Today, it's the Haitians. Who will it be tomorrow? Will it be you? Well, you know, what's interesting about this is, I mean, you know, he, in, in the statement of CNN, he certainly seems sort of proud of this or his bluster, which is he's made a career of it when he was in law enforcement. He's sort of, you know, being the tough talking uh, sheriff guy, um, despite kind of moving around a lot from different departments. But this is just, I mean, there's a long history of this in this country and in many countries of demonizing immigrants of, I mean, it was Irish, it was Italians, uh, you know, in the, the, you know, the early days of, of mass immigration to the United States. I mean, there have been, there have been people like this throughout our history who have, I mean, said exactly these same things. It's remarkable that, you know, that this continues, that in this day and age, this still, it, and I guess it continues because it works. It works to demonize a group like Haitians. Clearly, Donald Trump thinks it works. J.D. Vance thinks it works because that's why they're continuing to do it. And this guy thinks it works too. Well, I, 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 the majority of Americans are ready to turn the page against this. Uh, the, the Vice President Kamala Harris has said it time and again. We're tired of people dividing us targeting one community and pitting them against another. We want to build up our communities, not tear them apart. And I know Haitian immigrants, I know Haitian Americans in my home state of Nevada and people all across this country who are here, they've been vetted, they've gone through a legal process to be here, uh, it's comprehensive. They have children who are trying to attend school. They are nurses and teachers and first responders in our community. It is this type of, of racist, hateful, intolerant rhetoric that must end, whether. Man, did y'all hear him though? This man said, he, oh, I apologize. And uh, I withdrew the, uh, I withdrew the post. And then he said he gonna pray about it. It ain't no remorse or nothing in what he said. And then for one, whether you withdraw it and you apologize, it's already out there that you that that you see us this way. You know what I'm saying? You see us this way. Now, I got a remedy for my people. This is directly to my Zoes and my Zoets, man, and, and, and my, my melanated people, period. Whether you Haitian, whether you're not Haitian, my melanated people, period, that's here in the United States because I'm a legal citizen. You know, I am a legal citizen. So I'm going to say this, right? The only way we're going to be respected, we started hollering about reparations. We started hollering about all of this stuff, man. But we missing the key point. We don't have no unity. That's the key point. Once we regain unity, another thing we, we, we got to establish is we got to establish, establish ourselves as lobbyists. We got to become lobbyists because lobbyists is basically the ones that's paying the politicians before they even get them seats. They paying the politicians to push the agendas that they want. Those politicians that standing up there, man, they not really just coming off what they believe. They following the, 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 the lobbyists that's behind them. The, the lobbyists that's behind them view the world just like they view them. But if them, if them, them uh, lobbyists pay them politicians to say something different, that's what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Because they getting paid to push what they want to push, what they want uh, the lobbyists want them to push. You know, I'm not saying that Trump don't feel that way. I'm not saying none of that. What I'm saying is that they still have lobbyists over. Them. The lobbyists is basically like uh, when you go to the NFL or when you go to the uh, NBA and you get the endorsement contracts right you can't go out there and portray yourself in a certain way when you got endorsements they'll snatch them endorsing from you it hurt your pockets you know it hurt your pockets look how many celebrities then got endorsements took away from them 
Look at Kanye West. Kanye West then said some stuff that was out of pocket to uh uh and look at Adidas. Adidas snatched they cut and all the rest of them to snatch their stuff from him, making it hard for that man to get his money back. But he still got little little stuff going on. He ain't hurting like that. Uh look at look at P. Diddy. When you do stuff out the way of the endorsers, you get your money took. You know what I'm saying? You get blackballed. That is what's happening. So when the politicians do stuff out of the way of the lobbyists, they get blackballed. That's when you see them politicians starting to get, you know what I'm saying, all type of stuff get to coming out because they getting blackballed by the, 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 the lobbyists. You know? Come on, man. We got to wake up and we got to start paying attention to what politics really is. When you a voter, you the pawns on the chessboard. You know? The army, the police... People like that of security, they the knights. The churches, the mosques, the synagogues, those are the bishops. The rook, that's the senate and the representatives, which is the congress. You know what I'm saying? The king and the queen. The king is the president. The queen, you know what I'm saying? Vice president. So you got to think about it. You know what I'm saying? Or I, I even put it like this here. I don't even think the queen, I don't even think the queen played the role of the vice president. I think the queen played the role of, of business. I think that's the aspect of business. So you got church, you got uh, uh, military and, and uh, security. Uh, you have uh, churches and you have business. So that's what I think that is. And now the king is president because he POTUS. He's the, supposed to be the head of the state, right? So the chess master is the lobbyist. The chess master is putting the pieces where he need them to go so that he could get a checkmate against the other team. A lot of people been playing life chess as they just been been moving. A lot of a lot of melanated people don't even know that they pawns. They think they bishops. They think they queens. They think they knights. You know what I'm saying? But they not even up there. They, they just pawns because they, they average Joe voters. What make the world go round is becoming a lobbyist. I, I'm telling you right now. What make the world go round is becoming a lobbyist. Every lobbying company or group, I say group, they have influence on what they trying to push. Farmer. They getting all their medicines pushed through Congress because they lobbying to get the medicines pushed. The Israeli lobbies, they getting all they uh, 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 foreign policies pushed because they lobbying the U.S. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to push their uh, they, they policies. But now you have you have China, Russia, Africa, and uh, India, then teamed up, and a couple more is teaming up, man. And America is, is finna get ugly for America because the dollar value is really finna cripple. And we finna go bad, man. I'm telling you. So uh, we got we to gotta wise up, man, as, as melanated people. We can't be hollering about, oh, I'm finna run back to Africa after all that stuff we've been sitting over here talking about. I ain't African-American. I'm black. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When the United States get the crippling, you stay your you stay your 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 black American self right here. You know what I'm saying? All the African Americans, man, y'all team up with your African American counterparts, man, because I'm telling you, the United States, the value of the United States dollar is crippling. You know what I'm saying? These 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 countries then teamed up and they finna finna take uh uh the US, they finna take back their wealth from Great Britain, uh Spain, the United States. Watch, within the next 20 years. Within the next 20 years, a lot of us might might not be uh, alive to see it, but within the next 20 years, y'all mark my word, man, this is a prophecy. Y'all finna start seeing a turn in the United States, man, for the worse. So, uh, man, we're gonna have to start turning ch to chess masters, man, becoming lobbyists, man. Y'all get at me. We can talk about this here later, but uh, I gotta put this here on post.